Bhaidman once again. It is indeed our great pleasure to have Professor Bhaidman uh, with us today because we thank him very much for accepting our invitation. In fact, we fondly remember his last visit to Aizar Kolkata in the next first edition of this uh, summer school. And he delivered around five lectures and uh, around eight hours, and even in the odd times. And that was uh, uh, solely due to the students' demand. And Professor Bhaidman is currently a, a professor at uh, Tel, Aviv, Tel Aviv University, Israel. And he did his PhD in 1987 with, uh, uh, from the same university with the great Professor uh, Yakir Aranav. And he became associate professor in Tel Aviv University again in 1998 and professor in 2005. And actually in between, he was visiting, visiting professor in many premier universities, uh, including UCL, Oxford University, and Institute of Experimental Physics, Innsbruck, Vienna. Professor, actually, Professor Weidman has, needs no introduction uh, in our community, as you know. That is, he is extremely renowned and well recognized in the field of quantum foundation and quantum information theory. And uh, truly, he has made uh, quite a number of pioneering contributions. I mean, I think the most celebrated one is the weak measurement and the weak value in 1988. And another one is that uh, very close, that is interaction with three measurement, that is the famous bomb testing experiment with Elin Chan. However, he has many other pioneering contributions. For example, the teleportation of continuous variables, cryptography with the uh, uh, orthogonal states, that's the goldberg Heidman protocol, and protective measurements, non-local measurements, modular values, counterfactual communication, and there are many. He served as a lead editor of many premier or high-valued journals, and he's currently the chief editor of the intro journal Entropy. And he has received many awards, to name a few, that he is a life member of American Physical Society and also the other many physical societies, and the chatter honorary professor at in the John Esbell Institute. He has published around 200 research articles in a high impact factor journal, including Science, Nature, PRL, and PNAS. And his age index is around 50, 51. So it is really very high. And today we get the opportunity to listen to him once again. And today he will be talking about the exotic measurements and a very interesting and important topic. So I request the students to, uh, to listen to him carefully and ask questions to the chat box of the Zoom platform, either here in the Zoom platform, or you can ask the chat question in the chat box of the YouTube channel. And I, I can forward the chat question to Professor Weidman. So with this, I'd like to invite Professor Weidman to deliver his lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I was uh, thinking, what uh, can I talk uh, now, which I didn't uh, say uh, two years ago in all my lectures. And um, in fact, I found uh, three topics. Uh, and the three topics are related, uh, they are related to my theoretical uh, proposals, but um, what common that I took part in experimental work in them. Because uh, essentially I was, I can say that I'm in a theoretical physics department, uh, but uh, I got interest uh, in uh, experimental work. And I, I think that when you go to laboratory and you make an experiment, your understanding became much deeper. Uh, and uh, I had uh, one work with this uh, asking person where they have been, uh, which maybe it's a lack of the beginners. Uh, it was uh, very successful. Yeah, with uh, relatively uh, small and not too advanced uh, laboratory in Tel Aviv. Um, and since then, I uh, joined forces with uh, people in Germany, China, Italy, and US. And uh, so I will uh, describe uh, things which related to experiments. Now, somehow, if uh, the topic is not paradoxical, strange. Uh, I'm not much interested. So I think all these experiments are kind of exotic experiments. They're not uh, something which you might expect. They're strange, they're paradoxical um, uh, for some reason. And uh, so I will uh, essentially talk about these are three kind of independent topics. And uh, you are welcome to interrupt me if I will uh, finish two and not three. Nothing bad will happen. 
So let me share a screen and start my talk. Uh, in Israel, we are kind of uh, happy that a uh, few days ago, we were allowed to remove uh, the mask and come back on, almost to normal. Uh, but uh, I hope it will happen soon in your country. Too. Um, okay, so exotic paradoxical quantum measurement. Uh, the first topic is measurement of non-local variable, which is apparently unmeasurable. So the strange is uh, we measure something which is, we think naively it cannot be measured. And you know, it was a long time ago, London um, and Pyros uh, thought that it cannot be done. And uh, but this was 1931. Since then, Aronov uh, kind of realized that this kind of measurement can be done. And uh, in fact, this is my first work in my PhD studies with Aronov. Uh, I mean, the theoretical proposal. The experiment was done uh, just uh, um, just recently, and uh, I think it's still not uh, acknowledged the importance of it. The second one, a measurement with a single click when apparently an ensemble is required. So in fact, I will uh, discuss a few uh, experiments like this because in the same laboratory, there were at least two conceptually different, but they're related. Um, there are variables which are, sound like statistical variables, and we consider them as statistical variables. But in some situation, you can make one click and find it. So I think this is this is kind of strange, and this is why I bring it here. Um, the final topic is what's uh, related to my interaction pre measurement with Avi Litsu. Uh, but it's a kind of a next stage. Measurement with a probe, which leaves no trace. Interaction free is a meaning of interaction free. It's kind of very controversial issue. But from my point of view, if you can um, find something about uh, some object without leaving any trace near the object, this is kind of the strange thing. And for a long time, I saw that uh, I can find uh, this presence of a bomb, which is what I did to the Litsur, without uh, leaving a trace near the bomb. But I was pretty sure that I cannot find that there is no bomb without leaving a place in the place where there is no bomb. If there is a bomb, I can kind of find it. Uh, but the empty, empty space, I thought we cannot. And uh, in fact, together with Arona, which may be our latest common uh, joint paper, um, when I discussed it with Arona, he didn't believe me. And uh, it took me a long time that uh, he has a great intuition. Um, and uh, we found a way how to overcome uh, my objection as how to do it. So let's uh, go again about these three topics. and. Say a little more about it. And then, in fact, there will be another round with detailed description. So, measurement of non local variable, exotic because there are no non local interactions. <clears throat> I don't believe in action at the distance and non local interactions. All interactions are local. And uh, although many people uh, take a lesson from quantum mechanics that the world is non local. I'm trying to say that uh, there is something in it. There is entanglement, which is kind of definitely non-local property. But entanglement is not interaction, and we do not have local interaction. So if we have a non-local variable, then it would be strange uh, if we can uh, measure it. And uh, in fact, this is the first paper, uh, my first paper in uh, which uh, we found that some non-local variables can be measured. There is also a proof that some other variables cannot be measured because they will break relativity. Uh, but uh, common belief until then that uh, relativity pro uh, prohibits measuring any kind of non-local variables, in fact, turn out to be wrong. Uh, the experiment was uh, published about two years ago. 
in PRL, and uh, I'm slightly disappointed that there are too many citations for this paper because I think it's really important one. Again, it's something which took long time to, uh, the idea was in 86, and it was uh, performed on a, in 2019, it's a, a first experiment. And clearly there are paradoxical issues here. Uh, even more in this paper, we measured uh, this uh, non-local variable, the product of spin in two places. And it's clearly paradoxical because in this, we found it that it's equal minus one. What is also true for this particular situation where the spin was selected, that um, if we measure separately, uh, the first variable, then we can we'll get minus one with certain. If instead we we'll measure the second variable, we'll get minus one with certain. But when we'll make a product, somehow minus times minus equal minus. So this is a uh, product rule failure, failure for pre and post selected system. So this is demonstration of this paradox which Again, I, I talked about this like 20 years ago after Hardy uh, published this uh, um, important paper, and it's only now which was performed in the experiment. And next topic. Next topic is about protective measurement. There is a big discussion. What is the meaning of the wave function? Is it the property of ensemble or a single system? Um, Aronov and myself uh, had uh, this idea, which supports, it's not really a decisive argument, but it provides some support to believe that I have a strong belief anyway. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, so I was interested in all kinds of support that the, that the quantum state is the description of a single system. So if at least the system is protected, then we can measure the wave function of this single um, system. Uh, experiment uh, was uh, performed about two years ago. Um, and uh, it was published in uh, Nature Physics. And just a month ago, uh, there was another paper which uh, published details, essentially, of this experiment and some extension. Um, in, um, and uh, here we didn't measure really the wave function. We, we, we measured only one uh, uh, variable, but we measured expectation value, value of operating. Expectation value by kind of the name and definition is something statistical. We did it with a single click. So this is kind of strange how you get statistical uh, value with a single click. The, the, uh, the claim is that if the system is protected, the expectation value is not statistical. Now, um, the same team with essentially the same uh, devices uh, apply extended this experiment uh, for measuring uh, robust anomalous weak measurement with a single click. This weak measurement, weak values, there is a big debate, and usually many people say it's a property of ensemble. But also for weak values, I'm trying to uh, argue that it's not a property of ensemble, it's a property of every pre and post selected system. And um, again, um, I admit that in many cases, this weak value cannot be measured by a single click. But there are some special cases which, in which it can be. In fact, uh, the paper is uh, one year before the, uh, the famous paper of weak values. So this was kind of preceding the case because this wasn't so important because to make this, it's kind of rare quantum events. Weak values you can find with certainty. You look on ensemble, you always find weak values. But here you have to find some special operator, special system, and then you can find it with a single click. Now the experiment uh, was uh, 
uh, published just the last month. Um, and uh, so we succeeded uh, to find anomalous weak value um, with a single click. Uh, this, this is a Italian team uh, under, uh, um, in the laboratory of Marco Giovanni, both experiment, the protective measurement and the single, uh, single click experiment were done to. Here we measured, uh, and uh, the lesson we can learn from it is that there are these particular variables uh, that uh, have anomalous weak values, in particular for input selection, but we do not need an ensemble weak. But sometimes uh, weak value considered as kind of a analog of expectation value for print post selection. And I'm trying to say no, and this is kind of a special, a special particular case when this is not the case. Inter interaction free measurement with the place is empty. For me, it's really kind of exotic because for many years I thought it's impossible. Because I had many uh, papers trying to say that the people who claim for counterfactual communication for other things, that in fact they were not counterfactual, that there was some trait that, uh, that they were not really interaction free. I thought that you can find interaction free in the presence of a bulb. I thought you cannot find interaction free manner in the absence of a bulb. Um, but uh, Arnold didn't believe me, and uh, we work on it, and uh, uh, together we found a way um, how to overcome my belief. And again, uh, technically, if I have a particular space time point, and uh, there is nothing there. I still believe it's true that you cannot find that there is nothing in particular place in particular time without leaving the trace. But if you visit this place twice, if you kind of make an, uh, then the situation changes. And then you, you can say you can leave no trace in particular place when you know that it's either occupied or not occupied in two, in two particular moments of time. Or there are two places when you say um, that either there is something there or in both of them, or in both of them there is nothing. You can find that there is nothing without leaving any trace. If there is a one object in one place, you can find without leaving a trace anyway. This is in original interaction we measure. But uh, this, uh, to find that it's empty, it's more tricky. You need two places. You can find that two places are empty. Now, as a hmm, experiment, uh, in fact, this type of experiment is still, uh, we kind of, we're in the process of almost finished the experiment, we finished the paper and submitted it once, but then one of the collaborators get corona and uh, the process stopped. So this is really, uh, it's just the team of the experimental team, but this is a, uh, so the method is kind of related to this. Um, but uh, this experiment is, uh, is really not, 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 not published yet. Okay. So maybe before I start going in detail, any kind of general questions here? People have. Okay, let's go. So my first topic is measurement of non-local variable. As I said, uh, the theoretical idea, my first paper from 86, the experiment two years ago uh, in a group in China. Um, Xiao Ye Su was kind of the main uh, uh, power of this experiment. And what is non-local variable? Non-local variable, it's a variable uh, which is a function of two places. 
there is a place A, and there is a place B, and they are far away. And uh, I have uh, defined some variable, some function of A and B. This function of A and B is the local variable. If I have something about A, it's local. Something about B is local. But if I have something about a uh, kind of joint variable, about A and B, this is not local. This is definition. Now, what is, uh, and I want to talk about standard quantum uh, measurement, the standard definition. What is standard definition of quantum measurement? Is if I start uh, with the eigenstate, I have some variable. It is in an eigenstate. So my initial state is an eigenstate. Then um, my pointer should give me, tell me what is an eigenstate. Before I don't know what is eigenstate, somebody give me a system with a no or with in an eigenstate, which I don't know. My measurement should tell the, uh, what is eigen what is eigenvalue. Eigenvalue is a name for this eigenstate. And after this, my state should not be changed. The standard, some people call it special name on demolition, but standard definition of one measurement in quantum mechanics, one Neumann measurement, is by definition supposed to be non-demolition. If I measure an eigenstate, I'm not supposed to change it. So the final state should remain the, the original eigenstate. Now, Van Neumann uh, introduced this uh, conceptual Hamiltonian, and this is what, in fact, done in many real experiments. Um, G of t is just uh, non-zero in the time of measurement. C is what we measure. And P is a conjugate momentum of our pointer variable. The, the equation tells us that P changes depending on the value of C. And if C is eigenvalue, so it became like number. So if the measuring device has a pointer, originally around zero, and when we start measurement, uh, there is a process. If we start this particular eigenstate, the pointer moves exactly to this other place. What's exactly? Everything is quantum. Everything has some uncertainty. But the uncertainty of the pointer are much smaller than the uh, position of pointer in different eigenvalues. So I can say, what is the eigenvalue of my observer? So maybe let, let's repeat. This is a standard measuring. I start in the point of zero. I end up in particular, I know that two final is around CN. And this state should remain as is. My measurement should be reliable. Every time I start with an eigenstate, it should tell me with certainty the value. It should be non-demolition. Every time I state with an eigenvalue, I should uh, end up with the same eigenvalue. And it should be instantaneous. Now, instantaneous for a, for a variable which is related to A and B is a little problematic because the theory of relativity. But at least the meaning, I, I will specify. We can say, let's take particular Lorentz wave and say it's instantaneous there. And again, instantaneous, it's not zero time. There is a short time. But the time is much shorter than the line go from A to B. Uh, and it uh, should be the same. Um, I, will specify, I will specify what do I mean. Uh, if it's local, no problem, because I, have, I come here with my measuring device, and immediately after the measurement, I know the outcome. My pointer is again here. I will talk a little more what, do I mean, what is the meaning when we have about instantaneous if our variable is non-local. So um, here there is a description and looks everything is fine. So why? What is the problem with non-local variable? Because this kind of Hamiltonian, I cannot write for this variable. This Hamiltonian is non-local. This is my uh, variable of my pointer. Pointer might be here, here, or some other place. 
Here, it couples immediately both to something in A and something in B. There is no coupling, no local coupling. I can put something here to couple to A, something here to couple to B. I cannot put something somewhere so it will couple to both, both of them in the immediately. And again, um, this distance might be uh, on the moon or even far away. So we really, this, this is what I mean by this non-local variable. Of course, if I wait till time, I can bring them together and then measure everything. The whole idea, I cannot measure non-local variables when in, in, a, in a very short time, when I don't have time to bring them together. So, uh, what is the method uh, uh, we found long, you know, with Aronov and Talbert long time ago? In this paper, instantaneous non emission measurement for some non-local variables. So what we do is the following. This is our uh, system. The system is composed of system. It has part A and part B, uh, which are far away. And uh, I make a coupling to a measuring device which has two parts. My measuring device has to be entangled from the beginning. It must have some entangled parts. So I prepare in advance measuring device with entangled um, with the parts which are entangled. And um, I perform a local coupling here and here. In some Lorentz frame, it's happened at the same time. Here, it's kind of a measurement. It's end up with a number. The same here. So short time for local interaction here, local measurement. I have some operation here. It's kind of a measurement which give me a number. I give another thing which give me another number here. In fact, these numbers by themselves mean nothing. But if I bring them together, I will know what is the value of my non-local variable. So it's recorded. So it already exists in nature. It's instantaneous. No one will know instantaneously what is the outcome of this measurement, because part of the information here and part is here, and by itself, it means nothing. You need to bring both of them together to know the eigenvalue. OK. Now, in fact, in this paper, we found a big restriction. There are many non-local variables cannot be measured. Here, it's a, the definition is general function of A and B. It turned out what we found, that we can measure A plus B. And we can measure A plus B modulo a number. Um, in fact, anything else I strongly believe cannot be measured. No go theorem is problematic, but at least we found some variables which cannot be measured. Product in general cannot be measured. Not on, over, no, not on every variable, but uh, and some particular examples, we, also in this proof, we show that cannot be measured. How we show that cannot be measured? We show that if they can be measured in this, uh, according to the definition, non-demolition, reliable, and instantaneous, then we can send signals faster than light. We cannot send signals faster than light, so it's a proof that there are some non unmeasurable non-local variables. But A plus B and A plus B model number can be measured. Just to be sure, A plus B is not a measurement of A and measurement of B separately. I can measure A, I can measure B separately, and I will know A plus B. It will be uh, reliable and um, it will be instantaneous it will not be non-demolition. I uh, require a reliable non-demolition instantaneous. Measuring A here and measuring B here, finding the value of A, finding the value of B, this will give me A plus B, no problem. 
And, and if I was in an eigenstate of A plus B, the sum of IA and IB will be A plus B. The problem is that in many cases, uh, it might be that um, A is not an eigenstate of the, and B is not an eigenstate. Only A plus B is an eigenstate of, um, of, of, uh, of the system. Then, uh, in the moment after this measurement, A is an eigenstate, uh, it will, I will change my state. I'm supposed not to change the state. If I'm in eigenstate of A plus B, I'm not supposed to change the state. And so measurement of A and measurement of B separately will find uh, A plus B, but, in, but not in a non-demolition group. Okay, so this is a paper, first implementation of the one measurement, um, instantaneous measurement of non-local variables. Um, Ellie Cohen, with some um, group of one of my students, performed more or less in the same time, uh, I think maybe slightly later, another measurement which uh, achieved uh, also, but it was probabilistic sometimes. So it wasn't kind of reliable because sometimes the measurement is poor. Here it's at least conceptually um, supposed to work 100%, non laboration reliable, and instantaneous. Now, uh, it required, of course, um, there are some. Uh, Minuses, and I don't know how to do it other ways. And the system, because uh, the measurement was this product of spin variables. I told you product cannot be measured in general, but this product, in fact, can be expressed as a modular sum. This is operator identity. The sum of spin half uh, sigma plus sigma modulo four minus one is sigma times sigma. And modular sum is measurable. And of course I can subtract minus one. This is why I can measure um, this spin half particle as a, the product of uh, Z components. In fact, the experiment was not with spin half particle. It was done with polarization of light, but there is a, um, uh, isomorphism between uh, polarization of photon and uh, spin cup particle. Now, um, I had a source of two photons, and I prepared uh, and this and uh, the part of the experiment, not, not trivial part, was to to prepare. It's in uh, this allowed me to prepare any kind of a quantum state, any polarization state of two photons. Entangled, not entangled, psi is this polarization state of my two photons. My measuring device, unfortunately, was not external. My measuring device was the photon itself, the two photons itself. But it was in the product state. My state was hyper entangled. I might be have entanglement in my polarization, but I also had entanglement in position because this device prepares the two photons, one in A and one in B. In A, it can be in the left side or right, right side. In B, it can be in the left side and right side. And I, the, prepared, uh, the, the, the photon was prepared in particular entangled state in position, plus, plus, minus, 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 then plus, plus, then plus, minus is left plus right. So left plus right, left plus right, left minus right, left minus right, and in particular phase. And there was a product. There was no correlation, there was no entanglement between uh, the position, uh, degree of freedom of these two photons, and the polarization. And so this allowed me, we made experiments with several, with 
with several psi. And um, we measure some, uh, this variable for my, uh, for my polarization. There are two photons, one here and one here. This is a measure, uh, the measuring device, device, as I said, it's kind of a special, if it's left or right. Finally, how I measure it, here there is an interferometer. And after a beam splitter, it come out two uh, places. Sometimes I get, uh, I get clicks here or here. So essentially, this interferometer can tell me if it's plus or minus. This is what, inter because in plus, you, know, you have a beam splitter, you can arrange something to go plus or minus. And the same about this. So in the end of the day, when we run it, what we get, we get some click here and click here, which tell us if it's a minus or plus. And in fact, even if it's minus or plus, it doesn't tell us much. But when we combine the, the data, this will allow us to know this variable. So we prepare our photon, the pair of photons, and then when we get a click, and again, each click by itself means nothing, but uh, the correlation between the click, uh, this will tell us well, what is the value of C. And the claim is that this is non-demolition, instantaneous, and uh, reliable. Now, instantaneous, this is was not too far. We didn't put it on the moon. And so it's, the process took some, but at least conceptually, there is no, that it, this can be in any distance. And um, so let's see the result. So the first, we, we, uh, we tested reliability. So when we send, we send up, up. Up, up, the product is uh, plus one. So the plus one, it will correspond to plus plus or minus minus. This is our clicks. We made a run uh, with like five, uh, like 6,000 uh, clicks. And uh, you see only like, uh, we had uh, like less than 80 wrong clicks. And uh, we had this like almost 6,000 good clicks. This is the correct outcome, this is incorrect. So this is, was really a re very reliable sound. Again, to take into account, we have to prepare up, up, it's also, so this is very, but preparation was to prepare it's up, up, uh, for the polarizer was good. So this, this is a reliability for this. But more interesting case, of course, uh, it's a kind of general, state of um, not just non-product simple state. So we made another experiment with up down plus I down up. So the first, the sigma Z should be now minus one. Because you see up down, here it's up up, here it's up down or down up. So, and this is reliability. This was slightly more noisy, you get, uh, but you see, still, this is a correct result. This is a, oh, these are errors. So, as you see, the results are, are really good. Non-demolition. How to test that it's non-demolition? Uh, they edit uh, tomography. We put here polarizers to test. Uh, we send the same state and then put different polarizers to test, uh, the, to make the tomography our, our two, two photon states. Putting different polarizers here and here, we could make the full tomography. It was very simple to up, up, and it's, uh, you see, it was very, very good. No noise introduced. It started up, up, and we didn't get up, down, down, up, or down, down. And 
It also was pretty good for this. We start with up, down, down, up, and we get only up, down, down, up. But in fact, this is not enough because the claim is that it's completely non-demolition. This state, not only that it's remain up, down, down, up terms, the face was not supposed to be changed. We can rewrite this in a different basis. This state, in a, uh, this was Z, Z base. If you write left X and write Y, then it will be X uh, up, up, down, down. X, if one is X and one is Y. So this is really uniquely test this state. And what we found, we found this very nice uh, um, agreement. So the tomography, so it was non demolition even for this. And we'll see. I see that they, I'm not sure I will finish all my uh, three parts, but at least, okay, I'll finish the, the first part, detailed description. Let's go to the protective measure. Um, again, the first idea was in uh, 93, was another paper with Givanadan. Uh, and uh, the experiment uh, uh, was in fact finished two years ago, but uh, the detailed experiment was published just last month. And uh, the announcement in Nature Physics was two years ago. Okay. Uh, what is strange here? It's measurement classification value of polarization operator with a single click. If I have, if I want to measure expectation value of a variable, you remember, uh, this was a model of experiment. What I showed before, the initial state was an eigenstate. If the initial state is not an eigenstate, but superposition of eigenstate, uh, then in the end we'll get this, uh, the, one, the first part of Van Neumann um, procedure, will lead to this entanglement. But pointer are kind of macroscopic, and uh, at least the standard quantum mechanics believe it must collapse to one of the eigen uh, macroscopic state. Cannot Pointer cannot show simultaneously to a different uh, position. I believe it does, but in, uh, this we don't see it because we enter different worlds. Never mind which interpretation. Uh, it uh, we. We have a chance to find any one of them according to these probabilities. So we repeat many times this experiment. Sometimes we get one and other, depending on the weight of the wave function. Okay. Out of statistics, we get finally the result. So uh, to find C, an ensemble is needed. And this is kind of statistical uh, variable. It, there is no, you look on this measuring device, you get this click or this click or this click. It cannot give you this number. This number is a function of this coefficient, how much of each one of them. This is, seems to be no way to get it in one click. You get many clicks, then you get essentially the height of every peak, and then you will find what is average. Weighted average. So the, the variable which we consider again, polarization variable, like a spin, essentially, uh, HH minus VV, like a sigma Z we called before, but with the, in this kind of basis. So we took a particular state, in, which is uh, not an eigenstate of internet's superposition of H and V. And uh, so we can calculate the expectation value of this. We have one coefficient, another coefficient, it's the probability, this probability and this probability, and this is what we get. We have more V than H, therefore it's negative. Now, uh, this is an experiment, the standard experiment. 
Again, standard wasn't so standard because they had a very kind of new single uh, array of single photon detectors. And uh, essentially, this was a polarization measurement. Uh, it was tuned that roughly it's supposed to come here for uh, V and uh, here for H. And uh, then we start running and we start getting clicks. And uh, so this was the first, I think, 20 clicks. Out of 20, we can make statistics. You see, this is this clicks around V, T minus one. This clicks around H plus one. Now we had uh, five like this and nine like this. So the statistics tell us minus 0 0.29. We get roughly this value with some precision, of course. It's uh, not too many. The statistic is small. The experiment is a little noisy. But OK, this is a standard thing. What we did, we essentially used similar uh, device. The only thing we changed, we added protection to our state. This state was protected all the time. In this measurement, what came here, it was not, um, it was really minus V, it was V. What came here, it was H. But we added protection. Right? Protection kept Psi all the time. And we run it just once. And the claim is that this click, this one click, was in the area of our expectation value. You see, it was a minus zero, you look from which pixel, and it told us minus zero three three, which is kind of roughly give me, give us the expectation value which we wanted to know. Uh, again, the precision, theoretical precision, and also uh, when we tested, um, it wasn't very good precision. But uh, of course, when you make statistic of very large number, you, you can get precise expectation value. With a single click, you will not get precise expectation value. But the fact that you'll get expectation value at all, this kind of precision, it's very strange. Standard one measurement procedure is supposed to be outcome minus one or plus one. You are not supposed to get any kind of number in between. This experiment gave us pretty good number. Now we tested. What I mean tested? We repeated many, many, many times, both statistical method and our single method. And we saw that uh, really it sits, uh, this is a histogram. It tells us how much of H, how much uh, of V. When we repeat it many, many, many times, not 20 times, it's like a thousand times. You see, this is counts. Uh, and we repeat it here. This experiment told us that the, every, uh, that uh, it, the whole, the interesting part that we do it just with one. We can do it with many and then to get it precisely, more precisely. More precisely, the center was minus 0 0.19. Here it was slightly better. So this is a number it was supposed to get. And this is uh, when we repeat it many times. But the whole idea is that this is interesting. We get just one time, and the first click was supposed to have some expectation, probability to come in this area. It came here. So we get from the first click, we get some idea about our expectation value. Let's look a little more carefully how we did it. Um, in fact, there was seven crystal. I, I drove one because my ability to draw. So the first experiment, uh, they all worked together. 
It's Bayer-Prigent crystal and uh, V goes to the left and IH go to the right. And uh, the separation was uh, strong enough. If it would not put it, we will get some kind of all of them here. But because of these crystals, uh, the beam is uh, shifted here for, for V and shifted here for H. So, uh, this is our protective measurement. How we make protective, this is what's called Zeno protection. We test every time that it didn't change. We put polarizer. You see, the original polarizer was always this state, but then we test it every time. This was polarizer testing that the protection is correct. It's called quantum Zeno protection. So we test it all the time. Um, and uh, so every, we know that it kind of didn't change. And when we put this, then all this beam came here. This came here or here. The beam came in this direction. So this experiment um, is uh, was the predecessor of this experiment, which I uh, wanted the main one, the new one, the robust weak value. Anomalous weak value via single photon detection. Uh, so, talk about weak value, and maybe some people don't know, so I think I have to say something. Well, what's the weak, uh, well, what is the weak value? One slide of two state vector formally. Weak value is a property of print for selected system. And the claim is uh, the work which I started when uh, my PhD with Aronoff, and uh, the idea goes back to Aronoff 64, Aronoff Bergman Leibovich, consider a pre and post selected system by two state vector, one from pre selection and one from post selection. And say that in between the complete description has this two wave function. The one which we all know, the normal one, but one which goes backward in time. So if I want to talk about property, in our world in which we started with psi and found phi, then first, the complete description here is described by C, but of every variable is described by weak value. The two-state vector is complete description. If I want to talk, talk about observable variables, there is this, this property. And what's special, any weak enough coupling, because if it's strong, then you change it. But if it's weak, then the psi continue and phi continue. So you take both of them into account, and uh, what you feel here is this, um, you have this weak coupling. Uh, so, a, the weak value is this number. It kind of replaces eigenvalue, expectation value. Some people say conditional expectation value. I don't like it this way because it's really every particle, every system which couples weakly to your system, it couples not to C. If there is a coupling to C, it will couple instead this C number, weak value. Now, sometimes this weak value is much bigger than uh, any eigenvalue because this scalar product may be small. This is anomalous weak value. And this is the example which we consider here. Now, robust weak measurement can be done not for every variable. It's usually kind of some other variables. In this case, we have some of this polarization observables of seven photons. This is our variable. Now, in an experiment, we make a trick, which in a paper we show that uh, mathematics is the same and conceptual is the same. Instead of considering seven photons, we consider one photon at seven times. 
The photon go from here to here at seven times between the different polarizers. And then uh, our variable is uh, really the sum of polarization uh, operators between this pre-selection and post-selection. Seven times like this. Now polariza uh, polarization can be plus minus one. The sum from one to seven plus maximum seven, min minimum minus seven. In our particular state, the sum of this polarization uh, was uh, uh, three times bigger. The weak value was 18. Now, uh, to make it kind of simpler, we make pre-selection our state, post-selection on this state, and then again pre-selection, post uh, and then it was only one polarizer. So it was really kind of pre-selected, post-selected, and then pre-selected, post-selected in another way. But if the, the weak value is real, then it doesn't matter. Psi phi, psi phi, or phi psi, phi psi is the same. So we use this to make it simple. And in all cases, this polarization was like around three. Then, uh, and the, the sum was around, around 20. So C week was seven T week. And uh, so this is forbidden, anomalous. The value is supposed to be between seven and minus seven. This is uncertain. The fact that we found clicks far away, this is even more bigger strange than we found this protective measure. So these are results of this experiment, the histogram. And again, the main result is this one click. The other thing is just the testing of our result. The theoretical calculation that C week was 18, and uh, what it gave us, it was like 21 or something like this. The first click with this uncertainty is this was a test that things worked correctly. They allowed minus seven plus seven. The first click was here. The anomalous weak value was here. And then we tested the experiment repeating it many times and we got the histogram that we expected. This is theoretical and this is experimental. Um, okay, um, I want to connect it to protective measurement to the NASA experiment. Why is essentially this we repeated? Because protective measurement we did before was really also the weak measurement. Why so? The weak value is defined psi a phi psi phi, but if the phi is psi, psi psi is one, so the weak value is expectation value. So essentially, in this experiment, it was very specific expectation value, a uh, very weak value. The one which is expectation value, it's not, uh, it was pre-selected, post-selected psi and psi. And uh, Robust weak measurement of non it was a robust weak measurement of non anomalous weak value. It's not anomalous. When it's uh, the weak value was uh, the anomalous, it's um, not beyond one and uh, less than minus one. But in this case, it was zero. So this was not anomalous. Um, or oh, close to zero. So this wasn't anomalous. I think we wanted the, it was around. So this was, uh, this experiment uh, was anomalous. And I want to mention again, uh, there is another experiment uh, by a German team, which was in fact very difficult because uh, the effect is tiny and it's not in subtle. 
The claim is that unprotected system, the expectation value of unprotected system is really statistical variable. But expectation value of protected system is really a weak value. And then it's a property of a single system. So what we found, we found the property of a single system. The expectation value of protected system is like a weak value and it's a property of a single system. I see that I was kind of right. During one hour, I finished two topics and let's not touch the third topics unless there will be no question, but I prefer questions so you can ask questions. I think it is more interesting that I will finish um, is, uh, and I will add discussion of the third topic. So let's let me stop here and see if there are questions. I hope you will not be silent because this is uh, the whole idea. It's a discussion and not just. Yeah, there are quite a number of questions already. Okay, so let, let me. Uh, no, should I stop share or maybe uh, I will come back? To I mean, share. Let's keep it. Maybe I can ask. I, I should I read it for you or you may, may read it. Uh, I think I, okay. Let uh, me read it for you. Uh, is it there in the chat or what do you want? Yeah, to? in the chat box. Okay, let, let, let me read the chat. Okay, uh, how does protective system allows measurement of expectation value uh, with a single system? I think you discussed already. So we just. Uh, but maybe how it might happen again. Uh, essentially, uh, one way to understand it, there are some details, but when you make weak coupling, the weak coupling doesn't change your quantum state significance. Now, uh, one then can uh, believe that uh, oh, I have, uh, let me have a quantum state, a system in a quantum state, I weakly kind of couple to it and maybe I'll find its quantum state. But to find the quantum state, I have to make coupling for a while. I need particular time. My pointer, I have to get significant move. I have this, uh, you see, if I'll uh, maybe, If I'll go to, oops. we can also show like here. This is Hamiltonian of interaction, and this is a pointer variable. Now, how to make interaction weak? The way to make the interaction weak, I need this P small. When P is small, it uncertainty should be small. Uncertainty of P is small, uncertainty of Q is big. So if I have my pointer very well localized, the P is very uncertain. And this is how we get uncertain kick in interaction. So I, I cannot really measure a quantum state without changing it. This interaction will start changing the state. However, if my state is protected by, if I, by Zeno effect, I, every, you know what's quantum Zeno effect. If you test that the state didn't change, it will not, and you test it very frequently, it will not change. So I make my measurement and in parallel by other system, I check that the state it didn't change. In the limit of very frequent protective measurement, it will not change. But so my coupling will be always to my uh, uh, state, and the state will not change. This is how I can uh, perform this measurement of uh, an expectation value. The state will not change because I protect it all the time. I slowly get in information from it from during this time, and if I wait long enough, I will get the information about the expectation value. So I hope this is answer. Um, uh, the first question. Yeah, there is a, uh, I, I just missed my international con in, internet connection was slow. There's a summation over a PK, K equal to one to seven. So how this uh, P is summation over some of our PK on projectors, how do you realize it's using the seven different crystals? 
right? Just seven different crystals. Uh, can you repeat? I, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, you want, you are measuring some projector, which is actually some or some summation over seven, seven projectors, right? Oh, no, no, just the, my projector in, in my experiment is just polarization. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just polarizer. So what comes through, what comes through is uh, only the right polarization. Now, there, there is this, um, in protective measurement, uh, there is this, uh, the difference between protective measurement and anomalous measure, anomalous measurement of uh, weak values. In protective measurement, I want to have a system, and I want uh, no, and, the, I, and I want to find the expectation value, or maybe on the, the same system in the later time. Yeah, on yeah. the same system in the now, later time. Yeah. If I couple for very short time, hmm. I change it very little, hmm. and then probability is that it will not will not pass my polarizer. The next polarizer hmm. is extremely small. In the limit of many polarizers and ideal devices, mm -hmm. probability is that my photon will be not will, will be reflected, and some of the polarizers goes to zero. Mm -hmm. In uh, our real experiment, there are kind of coating and whatever, but it's still it was of the order of half, so it wasn't the real thing. I, I need it's uh, it's always completely protective in the limit. Protective yeah. measurement, yeah. I should not change my state. And mm -hmm. the whole idea, if I make protection very uh, very often, then I change it very little, and Zeno effect will tell me that I always will succeed. Mm -hmm. And in my case, it was polarizer. See? And uh, if the uh, distortion was very small, then the, it was probability that will pass all polarizers supposed to be in the limit very big. And we had only seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you can do it infinitely many. Yeah. Yes, but in the limit, it will go to one. Mm. Of course, in the real life, it will not go to one because there is also reflection on everyone. So yeah. we had to find kind of a compromise between um, this. Just maybe, I, I, there are many questions. Just I have one more question. That is, the, you are saying that single particle result can give the results of the statistics. So it is a it's a it's a kind of philosophically it, it's a it's a shift in the uh, whatever we know about the standard quantum theory, right? So it should have many other applications too, right? Okay. So what I show there are two things. First, we can measure expectation value mm. uh, of a system which is protected, okay. or I can measure weak value, and the claim is that both terms they some people interpreted them as statistical, yeah. but they are really not. Because you have to say only, only peak you have, only peak you have, so you can say this is actually my single particle results, yes. You know, the expression, you always can write the expression. Mm -hmm. now, if you know Psi, uh, then you know, uh, then you can calculate C and say that this is a property of my single system. But if my system is not protected, Mm. I will agree that uh, expectation value of C, of unprotected system, is really statistical because there is no way to find it without ensemble. I need an ensemble. Right? If I know Psi, I can calculate it, but if I don't know Psi, I cannot, I cannot find out Psi. So expectation value, uh, the name is and statistical, and that it, if the system is unprotected, it's statistical. Now, I mean, that, about, uh, yeah. about uh, weak value. Weak value mm -hmm. is something which is pre-selected and post-selected. Yes. So when it's only pre-selected, I say it's expectation value and it's statistic. Mm -hmm. But when, when, I, when it's pre-selected and post-selected, post -selected, yeah. uh, then I claim that, in fact, the coupling to a weak value, again, the coupling should be very weak. Sure. And, uh, but it is really uh, the robust coupling. It's really like a coupling to an eigenvalue. The essence of weak value is not statistical. The weak value is not statistical properly. There was a big discussion that people said that we can do it. With, that weak value is kind of artifact of uh, conditional probabilities. And uh, there are several works to saying no. 
it cannot be statistical because you can find it on a single uh, with a single click. So the weak value is not statistical problem. And that's I became confused, but there are many. Uh, just just one one important one point. So you pre-select on psi, you measure some uh, c with some weak coupling, and then post-select on psi. So you get a expectation value, and in expectation value here, it is not the probability uh, uh, adding the pro adding and subtracting the probability, right? You get the what you get is a single click, and the single click. I mean, you will have a if you take the Gaussian, you will have a single peak. So single peak corresponds to a single, I mean, a single outcome, single result, single particle result. So the status of this uh, weak value is uh, same as the uh, whatever you showed for the protective measurement, right? Uh, well, let's see. Mm. The value. Yeah. Uh, next, next one. Yeah. Oh, maybe I think that I think that what's important is here. Yeah. After I couple only once, mm -hmm. my pointer will be in a quantum state if everything is ideal. Sure. Described by this mm. curve. Profile. Yeah. So you see, uh, it has information. It, it, it's not exact information, but it's clearly I get information around uh, mm. this the center, it's around 18. 18, yeah. And the plus minus, it's around maybe, I don't know, three, four, five, mm. far away from seven. So I do have from a single, this is a single pointer moves here. Mm -hmm. In a standard weak value, yeah. non mm -hmm. my pointer is extremely wide. Mm -hmm. It's not like 7 minus 7, it's like 100. And its center moves. But one click will tell me nothing because uncertainty, I find uh, something between 7 and minus 7, the uncertainty is 50. So of course I don't know the number. And here I, I find this 18 with uncertainty, which is around uh, maybe five. So there is a meaning for this 18. It's a single. As I say, I need some particular variable. Some uh, anomalous uh, weak variable, some special variables can be found with a single click. There is another thing when I couple to it very weakly, uh, then in the limit, uh, you I can see it works like. Uh, it works like an eigenstate. And uh, for a, if I couple um, well, very weak, if I make it weaker and weaker and weaker, this is relatively strong coupling. Weaker, weaker, and weaker, so it's really, uh, I feel the wider, and I will not find it by a single experiment. But there is this, what John, we did this German, we showed that the wave function uh, usually, uh, there is original wave function around zero, and then it shifted. Mm. In expectation value, it became a mixture. Yep. When I have a pre and post selection, it's, in the end, it's not a mixture, it's a pure state. Mm. And in this pure state, it's very much like just exactly shifted pure state in the limit. So it's like an eigenvalue. Yeah. So then it's the property of a single system, right? The weak value I claim is a property of a single system because uh, for very weak coupling, it shifts the pointer as if uh, I had a C number like eigenvalue, C number for weak value. It's not like mixture. My, my device, uh, my measuring device will not be a mixture. It will be pure state shifted by a particular number. So there is a real thing in nature. Yeah. So uh, my question was that if it is so, so it should have uh, the other other many applications of it, right? Again, uh, this happens when the coupling is very weak. Very weak, yeah. And when it's very weak, and uh, there is a width. So again, I look on one of them, I will not learn much. I know that uh, there is this real things happening and the exact thing happening, not probabilistic. Okay, okay. But okay. it doesn't help me. In this particular case, which consider here special variables, like sum of many, mm -hmm. then I can use it really to find it with relatively good precision. In other cases, it's not so useful. Conceptually, it's important, 
uh, to understand the nature of what the weak value is. But for practical application, if it's not particular, as not a particular variable, I will not get anomalous weak values with a single. Yeah, yeah. Sigma x equal 100 to the original work. I cannot get it with a single click. I, I need like uh, some of sigma x, then I can get mm. many of them. Yeah. But if yeah. I just have one, no way to get sigma x equal 100 with a single click. Mm. I need my measuring device with uncertainty of around 1,000. So yeah. that I will not find this 100. I mm. can get one click, which has uncertainty about 1,000. So I don't, don't get much information. Yeah. So there are many other questions. I'm sorry, I, I took some time. That is, it's from Rahul Bhomit that the question is, is in non-local measurement, can you elaborate on what you mean by there has to be some entanglement between the measuring devices between A and B? Okay, so um, let me share again. Him. Oops, jumps. I want to jump. Uh, for example, the, one of the most famous non local operators is a bell operator. If my system MD is two spin half particles, and uh, so I want to find the bell operator, I want to find if it's psi minus, psi pub say plus singlet or other thing, I can bring another EPR pair. My measuring device will be another EPR pair. This is what I mean by entangled system. So I bring another EPR pair, I make some uh, swap here and I make a me composite measurement of these two spin half particles and these two spin half particles. In fact, I have to measure exactly sigma 1 plus sigma 2 modulo 4 in x and sigma 1 plus sigma 2 in z. And this will tell me uh, the bell measurement. So the entangled system is like an EPR pair. And if my system is another EPR pair, this will allow me to measure to find some non local operator. Um, or like. So. Well, maybe if somebody asks, you can clarify if he wants to mention something else. So there are one more question from Deepan. The question from him, uh, from this slide, maybe. The could points A and B, could the A and B points for measuring non-local variable have same position in space, but different positions in certain operator space, which all are also causally linked by the speed of light? Again, okay, so A. Is it? No, it, it is someone. Uh, I mean, it's not you. It's not me. It's some of the yeah. blank. It's not you. <laughs> oh, because so, it is uh, them. Hmm. Okay. Is, it, is a question in the chat? Just so it will be yeah. easier for me. Where, where is it? It's from Dipan. Third, Dipen. third, third. What? what? Third comment from from Baba. Just a second. What time? Uh, yeah, two two fifty nine. Two fifty nine. I don't. Oh, it took fifty nine here, so there will be different. Ah. Uh, no, what, the, you know, what is the time step? This is supposed to be. Ah, I mean, <laughs> yours will be different. Ah, the time. Ah, the, the time is different. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just second. Comment, third comment. Yeah. Uh, let, let me uh, can all statistical uh, could points A and B points for measuring non local variants have the same position in space but different positions in a certain operator phase. Okay, uh, non locality is a property of a three dimension. The whole in the, the interest, what it's local or non local. It's in our three dimension. Uh, other spaces is uh, useful for physics and whatever. There is no any reason why it will not be uh, kind of you, you can define spin states, uh, you know, uh, isospin, whatever you want to define. 
and the phase space, there is no phase space in quantum mechanics. It's uh, more uh, uh, you can also define it. Um, you can write quantum mechanics in uh, maybe momentum space, but then you will not get any physics. The locality of interaction in uh, three space. So there is no relevance to causal domain. So causally linked speed of light. You cannot talk causally linked speed of light. It's only when you talk about uh, 3D in real space. So the space here, I mean, in uh, our three-dimensional space. Okay. Thank so you. should I go to the uh, 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 one more question, maybe that's a naive one from Akash Chandra. So, sir, can these techniques be used in quantum computing? Uh, I think uh, there are methods, uh, the post selection, uh, there are all kinds of, uh, there is this. Uh, Nila KLM, Nila Flam, uh, kind of teleportation or other thing. Uh, there are all kinds of bell measurement with post selection. Uh, the post, it's not exactly weak measurement, but of course, post selection can play a significant role in uh, error correction, error. So, this, this technique uh, could be definitely promising, and uh, some post selection techniques are used uh, widely. Uh, till now, if the weak values, so the, till now weak values were more used for precision measurement for quantum computing. Um, when we have a precision quantum devices, so we can perform quantum measurement. Quantum computer is improving because it puts a lot, a lot of money in it, and there is a big progress. Will, will, will it succeed or not? This is not me to say. There is. Um, I don't know the direct connection, but I would say clearly there is a connection to more, more connection to precision measurement yes, yes. Uh, than to uh, quantum computation. Mm. Okay, thank you. There's one more question that can all statistical variables relevant to the system be measured using a single sort? I kind of uh, was trying to answer this before. Mm -hmm. uh, the claim is that uh, I, we succeeded to measure it by a single click. If mm -hmm. something I can measure by a single click, just tell us that this variable is not statistical. It was thought to be statistical. So the weak value, some people said it's statistical. I never claim it's statistical. I always claim it, it's uh, not statistical. And uh, this experiment shows that it's not statistical. Mm -hmm. Expectation value kind of by, by definition sounded statistical. But special expectation value, expectation value of protective quantum system is not statistical. If the system is not protected, then it is statistical and nothing, nothing to do about it. So if I have some like, statistical variable, I cannot, I, I, I cannot measure it with a single click. The experiment showing a single click tells us this, the, this variable, which sought uh, to be statistical, is not statistical. Thank you. And there are questions. Uh, Professor Panigre, you want to say something? Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. I'm just. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I, I, I mean, there are some, may, may, may more questions, but I think these are not very much interesting. So, I have a question, one more question. So, yes, this is yes. really very interesting. And also, we talked about it in the last time also. Actually, is there any relation to this wave particle duality to this single uh, uh, single particle experiment? I mean, statistical value can be considered as a single value results. And is there any relation? I mean, I mean, you know, I'm a wrong person to talk about duality. I don't believe in any duality. You know that my philosophy of quantum mechanics is many word interpretation. Everything there is only one universal wave function. The yeah. end of story. A particles are degrees of freedom. No duality. So mm -hmm. uh, we are built like this. We can understand classical terms and for us, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, the real physics, the real ontology is just wave. Mm -hmm. And all what we I showed here, how the wave, uh, in the end, we get these clicks. This is how I understand it. 
Mm. But uh, in the bottom of it, uh, this wave, how the wave was, the, the, the difficult part was to show that the wave, the, the point, the wave function of the pointer shifted mm. out mm. of the range uh, of the allowed values with uncertainty smaller than the shift. This is uh, this is what uh, the kind of the achievement of this experiment. The fact that we get a click, it's we built like this. This is what we. I don't like duality. Okay. I think there are no more uh, a question that I should ask because these questions are I have to filter it out. So, Professor Panikai, huh, you want to say? Yeah, something? I think uh, you know. I mean. Thoroughly enjoyed, Lev, your talk. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Somehow, uh, there's a problem in the internet. My internet is really down today. So no point. Chalok, are you able to... Professor Feynman, no, yeah. thank you very much for this very nice and beautiful talk. And I will have many questions, I think, because I listen to again special right If people are interested, they're more than welcome to send me email to ask questions. Yeah, because they cannot ask questions always here because they are students. So maybe they can write to you and I do a kindly reply, then that would be very nice to them. So, so our uh, professor uh, oh, Lev, please convey our regards to Professor Aronov. Hope he's yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. You. Uh, okay. I will. Uh, in fact, we live uh, like uh, two hundred meters distance. So hundred meters. Oh, distance. really? Yeah. Never met him. <laughs> okay, Professor Bhajman, thank you very much for agreeing that giving the talk. It was a beautiful talk, and we will listen more from you. Uh, in future. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Ah, sir, uh, Professor Jukuski is already here? No. Wonderful talk, hello. Huh? Yeah, 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 it was very interesting, very nice. He, he is, I mean, the, is, is a star speaker. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. You no, know, he carry people around, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody is lost, little bit yeah. of. Uh. So this Chinese experiment is new, huh? because that... Yeah, it's interesting. I, I really couldn't get time to read. It's very interesting one, you know, the non-local non -local measurements. Uh -huh. and that's a very old, like, old idea of him. It's a fast exactly. idea, actually. In his mm. first paper in life. Mm. Yeah, Professor Jukoski is here. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm... I'm I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Professor Zukowski and Panigrahi, welcome. Thank you very much. Hello, would you like to introduce this? Yes, 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 sure, sure, sure. sure. Uh, is everything okay? Okay. So do, do, I, do I start now or? No, let me introduce you first, then you, you may start. Yeah. Yes. So, Professor Panigrahi, should I start? Sorry? No, not you. Professor Panigrahi, the, the organ convener, organizer. Uh -huh. uh, let me uh, be sure that whether it is. Yeah, you're saying YouTube, something. No, I'm saying that whether it is YouTube channel, it is also there uh, uh, making it live, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So and the questions from there would be paid to the speaker, through you. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to tell Professor Jukowski that in the Zoom yeah. platform, we yeah. have a very few number of participants. Actually, we have a, it's a, a huge number of participants, but we cannot accommodate them in the Zoom platform. That's why you have a YouTube channel. So most of the students and the participants are there in the YouTube channel. Yes, I noticed. I noticed. I was watching YouTube. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. So let's start this session. So by starting that formally the good afternoon to the Professor Jukowski and to the other participants. And it is uh, truly our great pleasure to have uh, Professor Jukowski here with us today. 
and we thank him very much for uh, accepting our invitation and for agreeing to deliver this lecture. Hello. Hello. No. So indeed, Professor uh, Jugoski uh, again uh, no, needs no introduction to our community. He is very well known and very well recognized in the field of quantum foundations, quantum information theory, and quantum optics. And truly, he has made quite a number of pioneering contributions on Bell's theorem, contextual Hello. What happened? Who is this? Hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, there is someone. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. So uh, he made, uh, as I mentioned, that he has made quite a number of important and pioneering contributions on the Bell's theorem, contextuality, entanglement swapping, multiparticle uh, entanglement, information causality, and many more. And not only that, many of his uh, theoretical proposals have already been tested experimentally in many groups in, in, the, in Europe. And Professor Jukowski is currently a professor at the Dask University and the director of the International uh, Center for Theory of Quantum Technologies. And he has been working there since 1976. And he has been a visiting professor at a number of universities, including the University of Innsbruck, Innsbruck University of Vienna, Tsinghua University in Beijing, and Chinese Academy of Science. And he is a former member of the Council of National Science Center of Poland, and where he served during 2010 to 2018. And he is a recipient of many awards, including the prize of the Foundation of Polish Science in 2013 and Copernicus Award in 2014. And many of us know that he was an associate editor of Physical Review for a long time. And he has published around 200 research articles in the high impact factor journals and he has around 50 H index, which is remarkably high. So today we got the opportunity to listen to him once again, and he will be talking about this physics and metaphysics of inner strength. And as you, uh, many of you also know that it, uh, this issue was regarded as a metaphysical one, which has now been uh, now uh, be empirically tested in the laboratory. And personally, I find that this topic is very interesting and is truly an exciting topic. So with this, I would like to invite Professor Jukowski to deliver his lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. So the first thing I have to ask you whether I'm I'm heard. Yeah, am I heard? There is there's some noise as coming somehow. Perhaps I will come closer to the to the computer. Is it better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's better. Please okay. share your slide. So, of course, I thank you very much for, for, for the invitation. I miss conferences. I miss India. I was there some years ago, fascinated by it. And as you know, I have quite a lot of contacts with Indian researchers. Had two Indian PhD students. Yeah, uh, no, Jal, yes. It's a great pleasure for me to give a talk during this conference. And thank you very much. So, one more question. I, was it uh, heard properly? Yeah, it's perfect now. Yeah, it was, it was heard perfectly. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I will, uh, I'm starting to share the screen. Okay. Okay, I hope that you see my screen, yes? Yes. Yeah, okay. perfect. Very yes. nice. So, so, so the, the, the title of this talk is Physics and Metaphysics of Inner Strength, even performed. Uh, Pre-measurements have no results, and this is a joint work by me and Marcin Markiewicz, a, a senior postdoc in, in our center. Perhaps I will tell you a few, uh, let's say, one or two sentences about our center. This center, despite the fact that I work at the University of Gdańsk, uh, for ages already, but uh, the center was formed in uh, 2018, and it is financed uh, by Foundation for Polish Science, which is a, a, a huge non-governmental organization. And but the primary source of the funding are, uh, funding is from European European Union, so they are channel, channeling the European uh, money uh, to us. And uh, we 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 are newly new, new, newly established uh, unit, and uh, we had a hiring period, but it might be the case that we shall have uh, a one 
uh, more soon. So that might interest some. Okay, so physics and metaphysics of, of Wigner friends. Okay, and I noticed that Professor Weizmann was talking about related uh, topic. Uh, I think exactly a week ago. So, and I listened to his talk on on, on YouTube. So, of course, this will be uh, very much related, but I will uh, uh, show you a completely different uh, look at, at at this problem. So, as uh, sorry, I have to somehow why it is not changing. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. So um, our motivation was uh, uh, related with a series of papers that uh, uh, started to appear. And really, I believe that Frauhinger and Renner, because in the past there were earlier papers, but Frau, Frauhinger and, and Renner paper was the one that started the new avalanche on on the topic of, of uh, Wigner's friend, because... Uh, of the provocative uh, title, quantum theory cannot consistently describe the use of itself. Okay, this, this was shocking for me to claim something like that. But somehow for two years, I decided not to be, let's say, not to follow this shock. Then I noticed that my close friend, Chaslav Bruckner, wrote a paper, a no-go theorem for observer independent facts. And, uh, okay. And I, 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 I read it, I, I disagreed with it partially, but that was not enough motivation. But finally, let's say what really pushed me into this is the next paper, Experimental Test of Local Observer Independence. And this is this pushed me because if you, if you have followed the subject, you see that already in the, the title, is, title is inconsistent. It's not... The, the, the title does not convey what is uh, inside of the paper because there is nothing about independence of observers. Okay, so so I, I just noticed in 19, uh, 2019 that there is a lot of confusion. And finally, let's. I also saw, I don't know what, let's say, uh, but perhaps it was... Uh, published before we, we did this, uh, our initial manuscript or... or, or or after this, I, uh, in, in archive, also the paper by uh, Professor Weidman, Local Friendliness, and uh, let's say uh, it's it's uh, uh, to me it's a very nice development of of, uh, of Chaslav's ideas, but uh, um, with which I, I agree a little bit more. But our uh, view will be completely different, and uh, and uh, uh, let's say we see this uh, discussion about uh, Vignes friends as a Reoccur let's say, re reoccurrence of the discussion about the measurement problem, which was uh, basically from the very beginning and it's uh, submerging and resurfacing from time to time, the, the measurement problem. Okay? And why is the measurement problem? Of course, the, 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 there were a lot of, uh, let's say, events like Einstein Podolsky Rosen paper, the Bohr uh, Einstein debate, and so on and so. But what, what uh, let's say, uh, for some people, there is a tension, for some, I stress, between unitary and evolution and, and the measurement process, which in the, let's say, good old times of 1930s, it involved a uh, collapse of the, of, of the thing that is uh, called by people the state of the system. Okay, and for me, that is of the knowledge about the system. Only then I can understand it uh, coherently, uh, uh, this process. Uh, and uh, let's say the, the other, let's say a little bit more vague and for some vague, I would like to say, uh, uh, the, uh, stream of the uh, direction of the discussion was uh, uh, led by Bohr, who said that one has to take into account interaction with microscopic instruments. In, in description of every experiment. Okay. And, and for me, and, uh, and for some, but not for everybody, the decoherence, uh, uh, decoherence is the solution for the measurement problem. Because, uh, let's say, in the, in the flow of time, uh, people were able to form a 
something that is that may be called a quantum theory of measurement. That means theory of quantum measurement, which uses only quantum mechanics, and not no not not additional notions. Okay, and and if you want to uh, see a, a very good exposition of quantum measurement theory in its early stage, it is the the, the textbook by Bohm, 1951. And I have to warn you, this is before Bohm became a Bohmian because he discovered his interpretation of quantum mechanics uh, one year later. And of course, the master of, of the coherence is uh, Zurek, that's the Polish correct pronunciation of, of uh, Wojtek Zurek's uh, name, uh, who wrote so many papers uh, on, on that and clarified a lot of things that I, I, I'm not list, uh, not uh, listing them. But he basically clarified everything. I, I uh, perhaps at the end I will, I will if if there is a discussion, perhaps I will tell something that let's say which I uh, something uh, related to to his works, which uh, to, to which I'm a little bit critical, but not about his de uh, decoherence. Okay, but. It's not a criticism of, of the facts, but really um, relating everything to that to uh, various interpretations of quantum mechanics. Okay, and uh, so as I use the word interpretation, and that's why I, I, perhaps it was good that I said something that I'm a little bit skeptical that Zurek is also discussing the influence of his uh, writings on interpretation on various interpretations of quantum mechanics. It is because in our paper and during this uh, discussion with you at this conference, uh, I uh, will present an analysis, which is interpretation neutral. Or if you like, it's interpretation, interpretation free, if, if, if you can withstand such a phrase. Or even, which if you want to work, uh, use a word, uh, let's say, uh, that lack of interpretation is an interpretation. So my interpretation is shut up and calculate. Uh, and and what, what, what are for us, for me and, and uh, Marcin Markiewicz uh, interpretations? And the, basically the... The main thing about interpretation is, is a specific, of course, there are a lot of other features, but a, a specific understanding of the notion of the quantum state. Okay. And so for us, a quantum state is a theory specific, that means by a density operators, description of a statistical ensemble of equivalently prepared systems, okay, which allows for probabilistic predictions of future, future measurements by the Born rule. Just recall that quantum mechanics, the, 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 the quantum mechanics stops at probabilistic descriptions. If you go, want to go further, it's, you are going beyond quantum mechanics. And the state, it should be inverted commas, because uh, I don't like this word, describes an, in, an individual system only as a member of such an ensemble. Of equivalently prepared system. And what is very important, and uh, please kill me during the discussion if you say that uh, that I'm wrong here, that all internally consistent interpretations, which are not modifications of quantum mechanics, agree with them. They they say something more. They say something more. They give some more. Uh, uh, let's say meaning to this, state. like for example, that it's uh, uh, property of an individual system. Let's say, uh, or or in the case of Bohmian uh, interpretation, the uh, non-local hidden variables which are, uh, are there or, or whatever. Okay, uh, but uh, but still, they use everybody uses the the Born rule to calculate probabilities, and that's the end. If the probabilities are the prediction, then then by definition, all predictions are for an ensemble of equivalently prepared uh, situations. Okay. So that's my, my that's my basic statement. Okay, and so now let us go to the Wigner's friend, uh, let's say, uh, Wigner's uh, friend, uh, 
let's say quarrel or whatever or re-emergence okay so let's let's remind uh, us what are Wigner's friends and of course that was as uh, professor Weisman I believe said uh, was introduced in by Wigner in 1961 in his discussion concerning uh, uh, the let's say the, the measurement problem and uh, and so uh, so le let me uh, in those first uh, three points here I will uh, tell you something about the Wigner's friend Eugene Wigner's friend the Nobel Prize winner Wigner not what nowadays is named Wigner Wigner's friend Okay, so we have a situation of, this is based on an example. Let us assume that S describes as the, the system, okay, and so we have a, uh, let's say, for example, such a trivial superposition of the states of, of, of the system. Okay, and then uh, a friend who is, who is, uh, who is in, in, in a sealed lab, so there is no interaction or communication, uh, with, uh, 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 excuse me, somebody's phoning. I, 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 I have to receive it because this is a 95 years old person. Hello, Zdzisiu. Zdzisiu, ja mam konferencję naukową, nie mogę. No, zadzwonię później. Sorry. Uh, that, that's, that's a, uh, let's say, quite a, quite a well-known painter who is, uh, very old and uh, he's almost my, uh, my 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 second father so i couldn't uh let's say make you a priority with respect to him and uh so uh, uh so uh, let's say the friend is sealed in in a lab uh, especially it's he's sealed off uh, from Wigner, who is kind of overseer of everything and and the friend of course uh, makes a measurement with, with with the basis plus minus s, and he sees either a result uh, consistent with plus s or minus s. Okay, and until the Wigner describes this the sealed uh, lab, let's say uh, one can claim, perhaps I should be a little bit more skeptical that the description by Wigner is, is something like that that there is an entangled state of uh, of uh, of the of the system uh, uh, states of, of the, which involve the states of the system and the perceptions of the of of of, of the front. Okay, and then Wigner opens and sees either this is plus one or minus one. Okay, it simply opens and says, "Well, my friend, tell me what what happened." And she's in my case, it would be she. She says, "Well, I, I saw plus." Okay. And so, and just look that I, I wrote down here uh, uh, something in blue and bold. Wigner just checks, and please remember that just checks. The original Wigner just checks what has happened inside. Okay, and then suddenly, let's say there is a modification which started with Deutsch, but uh, it's, it's very important that such a modification is used by. Uh, both uh, Frau Higer and, and, and Brenner and also by uh, Charles Bruckner. Okay, is that Wigner is mean and he performs a measurement on Friend's lab in a basis which is complementary to Friend's lab. Or as I will call it further on, there's a mistake in my, in my slide, it should be effectively complementary. Okay, and so so uh, to, to put it short, uh, let's say Wigner uh, not only can his his kind of measurement of what is inside of the lab of 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 friend is not checking whether this is the case or this is the case, but he uh, he also takes into account some weird superpositions. Okay, and and what is very important. Without such an extended Wigner, okay, I will call uh, him Super Wigner, 
the Frauhiger Renner paradox doesn't doesn't work, and neither uh, does work the, 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 the result of uh, Chaslav Bruckner, and neither all, uh, all both uh, both uh, pay, experimental slash theoretical papers that I mentioned are. Are okay, so le let me go to this uh, 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 to this paper, which is the initial paper uh, which uh, uh, started the new avalanche. Well, which is very good, but uh, because Renner works in Switzerland and Switzerland has uh, the highest mountain, let's say, yeah, uh, in Western Europe. So avalanches are. Are, are, are something very Swiss. Okay, so the thing is that uh, uh, let's say I will not tell you the Frau Higer Renner paradox because uh, I'm the only thing that I criticize about there is is uh, let's say, the way they use the the notion of the extended uh, of 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 of, of uh, sorry of this. Uh, super Wigner, who is able to make whatever measurements uh, of the joint system of, of the of the of the system plus the frame. Okay, so that's that's super Wigner. Okay, so the thing is, so so they were considering one lab. It contained a random number generator and a source, and there was a Wigner uh, who was overseeing the lab. The lab was also sealed, and there was then the system was sent to the second lab. And there was a measurement by the local friend. By the way, this random number generator was controlled by, by also by a friend, by, 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 by a local G friend, let's say, and here is local S friend. And, uh, and, and, uh, mm, and then Wigner was, uh, what is very important, Wigner was performing an experiment which was not checking what happened in the lab, Matt was uh, observing the reaction of the laboratory LS, which contained the system and the friend and perhaps other things. Uh, the, 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 the action of to his to his actions to his measurement actions, uh, which were uh, not, not just the confirmation of, of, of what what has happened. Uh, that will be more clear in, in, in the next slides. Okay. So, uh, and, and the paradox of uh, Frau Hüger can be found like that, that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the perspective of Wigner's is incompatible with the friend's perspective. So they, they tend to make um, uh, predictions which differ. And, and they additionally show no, the, the, uh, the, the following, okay, or uh, this, uh, at the same time, the, uh, or if you like, it's based on the whole analysis is is based on 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 on, 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 on uh, the, sorry. They try to show that there is an inconsistency of such a such three con conditions with quantum mechanics. Okay, so the first condition is universal validity of quantum theory. With this, I agree, but uh, and. Uh, uh, understood as follows, if the Born rule applied on, on a scale to some physical uh, system predicts some proposition with probability one, then an agent must be sure that the pros proposition holds. Okay? Very good. I, ag I can agree with it. Now, this, then there is a uh, assumption C conclusions drawn by different agents having the same knowledge of the initial state must be consistent and allow for transitive reasoning. So just look, and so uh, is, as you see, this is a clearly, uh, let's say, a, a, an assumption which is at odds with this uh, paradoxical results of this. Okay, so so now if you ask me whether I agree with this, I would say yes, I agree. They must be uh, they must be consistent. And now. Every measurement has an, a single outcome, and then uh, uh, okay. And I hope that uh, let's say we all agree. Of course, provided you specifically define this, this, this measurement as a. Uh, but we we all know quantum mechanics, so so I don't have to dwell on that too much. Okay. And now you should ask me whether I agree with this. I would say yes. So why do I see 
cannot accept the paradox of uh, Frauhi and, uh, uh, and Renner. And uh, this is because the last statement, I disagree that they uh, uh, apply correctly. Okay, so why is the paradox? So this is undefined status of, of measurements by friend. They just say friend measures and that's the end. But uh, that's not the end. Okay, because the, the thing is that the measurement by friend can be either irreversible quantum measurement, quantum measurements are irreversible, and uh, I will do, say something about that, don't worry, because there is a decoherence, okay? Oh, and the other possibility is that it is a pre-measurement, a pre-measurement. And, uh, and I will show you that, let's say, the, the paradox, let's say, could be discussed a little bit longer if one assumes that friends make just pre-measurement. And pre-measurement is not a measurement. And if you, uh, if I can use the terminology of of Chaflav Bruckner, it does not lead to facts. Okay? And and I, will, well, I shall present to you a surprise that in both cases there is no paradox. If, that means, let's say, if the, the measurement is proper, full quantum measurement, there is no paradox. The, the predictions uh, uh, are different than those on which the paradox is, is, is based. But even if we assume that it's just a reversible pre-measurement, which is much softer assumption on the intervention by friends on, on, in, 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 on, on the system, the paradox also disappears. This is the greatest form of, 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 of so. So let's say that this is a drawing by, by Marcin, and uh, so that, that's one of the things. If we have decoherence in friends' lab, okay, then, then the results have absolute meaning, and therefore there cannot be uh, any, uh, any contradiction. Okay? And uh, uh, let's say if there's no decoherence in friends' lab, that means, which is equ equivalent to the friends, if, that if they pretend to do a measurement, they do just pre-measurement. Pre then we get via ZHZ uh, inspired argument, the following uh, uh, inspiring equality, which, as you know, means that our proof will be uh, uh, reductio ad at absurdum. Uh, uh, reduction to, to absurdity. Okay, so we shall. The aim is to nullify the the, the paradox, or if you like, the, to to kill the bigness friend, the extended free bigness friend, the, 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 the one with superpowers. Okay, so in step one, I will in, well, I will use standard quantum measurement theory which involves decoherence, and I will show you that there is no paradox, because simply it's impossible to have the Wigner friend with those, uh, Wigner, Wigner, sorry, with those superpowers. Okay, then I give a second chance to the paradox in step two. We assume that there is no decoherence in, 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 in friend's life. And friend has a hallucination of an outcome. I will tell you what. It's to, you will, Know very soon why I call it hallucination. Okay, uh, and and uh, uh, then friends' outcome. It, it, it's kind of easy to show is outcome. Of course, it should be inverted commas. This is this hallucination is erased by Wigner's complementary measurement because, or effectively complementary measurement because, as you remember, to have this paradox, Wigner's have to have a power of being capable of making effectively complementary me measurement to, uh, to those made by friends. Okay? And hence, uh, the, 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 those outcomes are counterfactual. Okay? Because they cannot surface as facts. 
Okay. The, if if the if Wigner uses a concurrent measurement, which agrees, which is just a confirmation of the results of 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 of, of uh, his local friend, then this is just a check, and that's an, I think it, and it, it, this word does not appear in the paper. But while while I was preparing this talk, I think it's a good thing. So in this moment, uh, 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 just just checks. Oh my God! Just checks. What happened? And that's why this result is counterfactual. Because if if friend has this hallucination of an outcome, and Wigner counterfactually, because really he makes the complementary measurement, okay, would have checked uh, what has happened in her lab. Let's say he would have revealed, revealed her hallucination because if her hallucination do not agree with, uh, uh, and, and the checking is in the same basis in which measures or pre measures uh, uh, the local frame. So if they don't agree, then forget about quantum mechanics, forget about physics, blah, blah, blah. That's the end. Okay? There must be some, even those hallucinations by, by friends, have to follow. Quantum mechanical predictions to the shot. If they are completely at outset quantum, with quantum, then, then anything goes. Okay, the, all those statements are, are about quantum mechanics, not about, uh, let's say, whatever. Okay, and then in the step three, we give one more chance to the paradox. So let us assume, well, okay, let them be counterfactual, that but they can be part of the theory. Okay, so they are counterfactual, you will never check them, but let them be part of it here. Okay, and then we show that they are. They lead to this contradiction as one equals to i. Okay, so so now a little introduction to quantum measurement of uh, theory and, and the notion of pre-measurement. I hope that most of you know that, but I, I do believe that some of you do not know it, because this is not usually not the part of the usual uh, usual uh, lectures about quantum mechanics, and even, quite often it is even not, not a part of, of lectures about uh, foundations of quantum mechanics. People talk about Bell's theorem, Bohr debate, blah blah blah. But uh, let's say quantum measurement theory uh, is usually not there. Okay, so. So what is what, what let's say let us let us think about the action what what is happening according to quantum measurement theory in in friends uh, uh, friends G this one to the left in this in this in this figure lab which is observed by by video okay so so friend G performs a measurement on system G in an isolated lab using a device. That's important. It's always you, you, you always use a device. The device may be your eye. Okay, you, you can observe a scintillation in a dark room. Okay, but you, you, you have to you have to use some device. Okay, now the, let us assume that the initial system is in, in a superposition, and of course, alpha times beta is not equal to zero because otherwise everything is true. Okay, and then we make a pre measurement. And what does it mean, pre measurement? Okay, of course, per perhaps it is e even a little bit beyond pre measurement, okay, kind of super pre measurement, because really pre measurement would have correlated the system with the device. Okay. But we also correlate friends with it. So if this is a friend's state rela 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 uh, 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 relative to the state of her device. And this is head states and this is tail states. Okay? And, uh, and as you see everywhere, it's, it's a con consistent. So if system, let's say, let's say, uh, it's uh, the, the system states in H in head head state is correlated to head states of the uh, measuring device and the head states of the of, 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 for Wigner. Okay, and and this can be put uh, all together as a superposition of two states of the lab. 
okay, with the same uh, expansion coefficient. So this is the sto total head states of the friends lap and the total head state of a tail state of, of friends lap. Okay, two absolutely orthogonal states. And orthogonality, of course, is as assumed here, but as, as you must have noticed, there is no specification of the system, so for every of those subsystems, those two states are, are orthogonal, because otherwise such a lesson would not be 100% related to, uh, it would be a bad result, a bad measurement, okay? And so, so, so that's, 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 uh, uh, let's say, and now let us, I'm, I'm still, not finishing my presentation of, of quantum measurement theory, but let us already introduce the super Wigner, okay, a la Deutsch, Bruckner, and, and Frau Higer, uh, and Renner. And this is an agent who is capable to perform measurements in basing just look, containing a superposition, superposition of that, what, what, uh, which is the measurement basis of, uh, uh, let's say the, 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 which is the superposition of the of, of, of uh, let's say sorry, superposition which involves this let's say um, unambiguous head state of of the lab and unambiguous tail state of the lab. Okay, and still with some phases. Okay, obviously plus minus gives you orthogonal states, and so those two states are positive. Orthogonal. Okay, so that's the perfect. Okay, but let us go. So this is this. Mm, sorry, super, super Wigner. Okay, and now let us go. Come back to the measurement theory, and let us remember about super Wigner. Okay, it's a very nice invention of of Deutsch. Okay? So. We have, uh, in, in, uh, let's say, but let us introduce something which is an, a necessary ingredient in the measurement theory for things to turn into facts. Or even, even uh, in a more general terms, to have a microscopic classical physics. And, uh, uh, but this is a little bit different story. Okay. In, uh, so here I introduce the notation. So LG is the lab, which I which was already used in the previous slide. But I introduce some specific thing. This is the environment in the lab, EG. Okay. And of course there are, and the thing, well, what is environment? Let us, let's say, so let's say when I hear statements that uh, what if somebody controls environment, then, sorry, sorry, I immediately disagree. Environment it is something that you cannot control. It controls you. Okay, environment is by definition uncontrollable. So environment will be all, always thought of as something that is uncontrollable. So there's uncontrollable environment in the lab. And 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 one of some of the reasons for introduction this is is for example. Uh, 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 let's say that let's say the, the measurements, the results of the measurements, let's say they finally come to the microscopic systems, like like people or, or whatever, okay, or 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 simply there are clicks in the, 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 the detectors. And just look at the, the let's say a click of, in the detector is just uh, there was a click, there was no no click, okay. But if you uh, analyze, try to analyze the entire workings of the detect detectors. This is a highly complicated uh, problem involving very, very many degrees of freedom of which you control just few. And so the environment is by definition uncontrollable. Okay? And of course, this environment has to have two uh, uh, distinguishable states. And just imagine a beam splitter and two detectors behind it, and a, a, a photon which is uh, which is being split on this beam splitter. Okay, so the, the the total environment of this experiment is the environment inside the two detectors, treated as one joint system. And then, obviously, let's say 
in, in case of one experiment, the environment of, of the, let's say, upper detector is, you know, the, like some, some shock state and the other is, is, is dormant or other way around. Okay. So, so, the, so, so there are definitely environments go into uh, uh, distinguishable, distinguishable states. And what is very much it is enough just one degree of freedom is in a distinguishable uh, state. And that's all right. The orthogonality. That's the end. Okay. And, and so, the, the state of the lab after the measurement pr process must involve the uncontrollable environment. So it is not only those things which is, which are, which we said device and, and friend, but th there is also the environment. The environment may be inside of the friend, just like the the, the heat bath of, of our in, in our brain. And outside, we have the highest temperature ever in, in, in today. Uh, 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 and what is very important, Wigner, whatever is uh, are his powers, cannot undo the irreversible, the in pragmatic met, uh, wording, too complicated to handle. This is related to Heisenberg's cut, interaction with the environment. This is by definition. Okay. And because Wigner cannot undo this interaction, so uh, uh, effectively Wigner, uh, Wigner's des description must use uh, reduced density metrics for the system. System is G uh, uh, measure, measuring measuring device and and the. Uh, and, uh, and different. Just look here that if I trace out environment, then I have a mixture of those two states which pertain to those systems because LG is this. Okay, LG is this. Okay. Okay. And this means that the measurements by super Wigner in basis uh, like that would contain random results. And if they are totally random, then there is no way to formulate them. Okay. So the conclusion is that irreversible proper measurements by friends, if they, the, the measurements by friends are irreversible and, and, and proper, properly described by quantum measurement theory involving uncontrollable local uh, environment, there is no term. Okay? And the other thing which is, goes a little bit against the, the master, using Wigner, that uh, a global unitary description of Wigner's is wrong. Okay? If they forget about the environment. So it's always friend plus environment. All the environment is within the friend. It's, and this is the same. Because the only thing that a uh, friend has to report to Wigner is I got plus, I got minus. And I, all. There are a lot of more details about the state of of of, of, of her when saying this, this. Okay, so so let us give the second chance. So, so we killed, let's say, measurement theory. Let's say application of measure proper measurement in in in, in French lab paradox is dead. Super Wigner is dead. So, uh, but let us give it uh, as I promise in 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 in, in step two. Uh, a second chance, and that, and, but because of that, I, I, I am calling the friend a little bit different. According to current epoch, I will call uh, her virtual friend. Could have been Deutsch friends. Okay. And this is, as you must have guessed, friends, just pre-measure. And there's no uncontrollable environment. Okay. Okay. Then uh, again, we, we are in the same situation. So, we, beginner's friend uh, action is up to this point. Okay, so we have the superposition of heads uh, and tails, and there is nothing more happening in in, in the lab. Okay, and uh, uh, and they associate somehow because I don't I don't understand how. Okay, I leave it to the proponents of the paper. Uh, uh, a concrete single specific result of heads and tails. And according to me, this, is, this can be only a hallucination. Okay, because there is uh, you know, no concrete result. 
if there is still the, the super position. Okay, so so let us assume uh, once more. I so in step two we assume no the decoherence in front slab. Okay, but we assume super vigor who performs an effectively effectively complementary measurement along and along uh, in a basis which has among its states this basis. Or so as you see, this is effectively complementary because it's a equal weight uh, superposition of H state of the uh, lab of, of friends lab and T state. Okay. And obviously again super beginners erase the outcomes. Of this. And they and which is equivalent, they know nothing because if they find friend in let's say knocked unconscious, okay, the completely dizzy in being in such a state, then there's no information whether uh, she observed H or, uh, or, or tails. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, okay, and and what is very important? There's no way to recover the result of FG, okay, of the friend G, okay, because even in the Frauhinger Renner. Uh, uh, story, the friends do the final measurement, which triggers action in the lab. It's a halting, in some cases, it's some kind of halting procedure, which is initiated to, 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 to a cycle of, of measurements and, and so on. So, so this is a proper measurement. Okay. And, and, in Wigner's lab, there is, of course, uh, <laughs> decoherence because Wigner carries his own, uh, sorry, his, um, his own environment. Okay, so the conclusion is that the premium measurement results are counterfactual only. And what, what does it mean counterfactual? Counter, if you look into Wikipedia, counterfactual is uh, a statement that uh, uh, about something that could have happened, uh, but, but it did not happen. So for example, let's say, uh, and counterfactuals are uh, usually not allowed by good historians. So let's say, uh, let's say, uh, let's say uh, a paper in, in, in about history of Second World War, let's say, with a t let's say a t is what would have happened if Hitler uh, had not uh, invaded Poland. So they are not uh, uh, allowed. And let's say such counter, and so this is a counter something that that would have happened had something different been uh, done uh, than it was actually done. Okay. And uh, so, uh, and why uh, they are counterfactual? Because just look that. Super Wigner can also make a measurement which is consistent with this head tails basis. And then the hallucinations of friend must agree with Wigner's result. Because otherwise we have no physics. We have a, a completely, complete, we have not, nothing to, to hold to. Okay? And so that's why I, again the use what he just said. So he, the Wigner, so this is counterfactual because had Wigner checked the results, he would have re re received this hallucination as his result. He would have confirmed. Okay, and so we go to phase three. So, so, so we in, in phase two we establish that pre-measurement results by friends are counterfactuals. Okay. And we are happy. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but in step three, we say uh, we uh, we we show that uh, pre measurements do not have these things. So there cannot be even counterfactuals because it leads to a contradiction. Okay. And what is very important, I I, I was kind of. Uh, uh, let's say Martin uh, Markevich, they, they, he reminds me that I have to tell you that we shall use a G8Z type of algebra, but our reasoning is not a G8Z. I have to 
That, that's a very important. So don't think that we 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 feel this via G H Z argument. It is not a G H Z argument, but G H Z inspired. Okay. So we assume that virtual friends somehow see hallucinate outcomes even in in a transitory manner. Okay. And then we shall show a logical consistency of this. And, and of course, this nullifies the last chance for the paradox. Friends action as pre measurements plus definite counterfactual measurements, hallucination. So this is impossible. Friends actions as pre measurements and hallucinated out, uh, outcomes. Even this is impossible. But hallucinations are not allowed. Okay, so let us uh, try to prove that pre-measurements have no results. Okay, so the thing is that we will shall assume that pre-measurements have results, and then we show that this leads to a contradiction, which is the usual, usual uh, path for something like that. So, as I said, we are inspired by GAZ, so we take three laps, three frames, uh, three Three Wigners. In big, big, each Wigner has a friend inside of the lab. And the lab of the friend is completely seen. Okay? But, uh, and the friend makes this time pre measurement. Not a full measurement, but uh, pre measurement. Okay? And somebody sends uh, a GAD set to those three labs, or even someone is there in form of some states of atoms. Uh, in, in atomic traps. So, and it's, it's kept for a longer uh, time. Okay, and so the GHZ state, I shall write like something like this. Everybody knows, I hope. And what is very important, I will fix the basis. Some, some people like it, to call it computational basis. The, the, the initial basis for the situation, so the initial basis will be basis number one. And of course, as every qubit has two. Uh, um, a complementary uh, basis also uh, uh, basis uh, uh, then of course uh, this index can be also two and three and th these are the complementary uh, or if you like my, uh, unbiased basis uh, for the system okay and uh, so, I, as I said, in each station we have the friends, and the friend makes a, a measurement, pre measurement. And now, what is very important, and this is, this differs from the earlier approaches. And, 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 no, this does not differ from the earlier approaches, but the next, next thing differs. Okay. So, all the, uh, let's say, that this, there's, not, there's nothing that moves in the lab. The only thing that is done is just the measurement of, of procedures. So there's a fixed basis for, for friends and a fixed uh, basis for for Wigners. But as, as we want to kill super Wigners who are allowed to uh, to measure in effectively complementary basis to the one that is uh, used by, by uh, friends, so we ask them to measure in fixed effectively in a fixed uh, effectively complementary basis the, 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 the full system okay and so so these are the complementary basis okay yeah I, I hope that it's it's and you know what, what is uh, pre-measurement by friends they are measuring in basis three this one okay and and simply this means that if the system is in this state uh, uh, L of three, then there is a correlation, okay, like that, okay, and then there is a kind of L state of the of of, of, of friends, okay. Now, this, as I said, bigness measure a, 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 a joint system of a, a system and the friend in an effectively complementary basis, which is the basis for the full. Let's say system friend, super system, okay, but in a different way. Let's the other complementary, uh, complementary okay. Okay, so in this slide I repeat, so this is the measurement by friend, okay. And how do I define eff an effectively complementary basis of, of, of Wigner? So this is a basis, of course, as 
friend is a complicated system, and, uh, and, and so let's say uh, we, we, let's say we, we, I'm, I'm considering only, only let's, uh, let's say uh, some of the specific states which can pop up in the, in, in the case. So I'm not writing all, all states in this complementary basis, but only those that can pop up in the reasoning. So, so in the state K in basis two is in relation with basis three for the for the uh, friend slab in this, uh, which which is uh, governed by the unitary transformation which has exactly the same matrix elements as the unitary transformation which links the base for a qubit but links basis three with base uh, 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 with basis two okay so this is just the unit the, the, this is this is uh, Unitary matrix that, that is uh, mixing, not mixing, but transforming the uh, two bases. Okay, and now I, I love to make uh, calculations without calculations. So I want to just to uh, uh, show you that uh, without any calculations, that, that uh, I'm, I'm getting what I want. So just look, uh, 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 a friend. It's measuring in basis three. Okay, so the GAZ, you remember the GAZ was formulated in basis one. And then, of course, you can write a calculation how the GAZ state states looks, uh, uh, looks in basis three. Okay, and you get some result. And don't care about it because definitely it's such a superposition. Well, there are specific numbers here. Okay, but just look that this is, those systems, the interaction here is in, let's say, the, the, the preferred basis, if you like, okay, using Zurex. No, not preferred, the interaction basis of, of sorry, the preferred basis uh, uh, is such that the pre measurement is in, in basis three. Okay, so that means that if there are interactions with the local friends, so each of those states couples to uh, identical, identically called state of friend. Okay, so as you see, the, after the interaction of friends, the, the, the GZ states becomes absolutely uh, uh, looks has, uh, isomorphic form. The only thing is that uh, here are the states of systems and, and the same. Okay. And now, uh, uh, and so this is the same, and this is exactly as for qubits. Okay, so this ob obvious, then I hope that it's, it's obvious that if Wigner measures in basis K2, he will get exactly the same result like if somebody was measuring in basis uh, K2 the, uh, the qubits in the GHZ space without any friends, labs, environments, and just Okay, and so uh, 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 so, and this what is very important. Uh, let's say a probability of the counterfactual uh, uh, outcomes must follow exactly the same quantum predictions for concurrent factual measurements. Okay, hallucinations must agree with Wigner's checks. Okay, so this means that if we calculate, if we just allow only one Wigner to interact with you. With the friends, Wigner one. Okay, and then okay. So, so this probability when there are specific bases used by friend or Wigner, and this probability, and here is Wigner in, in uh, the final measurements is by Wigner, and the, here in in labs two and three, Wigner just check what what happened in the, uh, in, in friends lab. Okay, they must agree with with the situation if under the similar settings Wigner's uh, make the measurements. Probabilities, I think. And that's very important. There are just probabilities. Okay? Uh, okay? And so the conclusion is if the probabilities are identical, then the counterfactual outcomes by virtual friends, if they are in a configuration of settings which allows perfect GED correlations, must also reveal such correlations. Again, without calculations. Okay? But, okay, so. So let us let us write a kind of a general, the most handy uh, measurement for for the GAZ 
uh, experiment, which is uh, which, which uh, for qubits, uh, create, uh, so we have a the basis is plus minus states of, like that with the, with the fat local phase, which is defining the, 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 the final form of the basis states. Okay, and just look that phi equal to zero is our basis L two, and this, if you remember, this is the basis of pigments. Okay, and phi uh, uh, equal to pi over two. This is the basis of planes because planes uh, uh, measure in basis number three. Okay, so as you see, this correlation function and this general state here, they cover uh, everything that is, that is interesting for us in this experiment because we allow the, the actors there only to the things that we allowed. Okay, and then it's a it's it's because of the cosine is the obvious thing is that in case of such three cases of settings, uh, 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 in the case of qubit, the correlation is plus one, cosine is equal to plus one. But if all the phases are zero, uh, this is minus one. Okay, now there you go. So now just once more recall that friends measure with pre-measure with phi m equal to zero, and, and weakness measure with phi m equal to pi over two, effectively. Okay, but that's a kind of effective complementary measurement, but it, has, it gives exactly the same results. Okay? And now the results of friends must be of the form plus minus one, and of, of weakness, and also friends must be plus minus one. Okay? But in our experiment, and just look, this is just one situation, we are not changing anything, and the results of uh, bigness must multiply to one, okay? Because the cosine in their case is equal to two. But in the case of friends, the cosine is not equal to one, it is equal to one. So whenever we uh, uh, put a pair of the uh, counterfactual results by friends, the product must be one. Okay, and then it's uh, not even back of an envelope back of a postmark uh, uh, calculation to show that the square of the uh, hypothetical results of, of friends is minus one, and therefore they are imaginary, which is a, a lovely word which fits the situation. So they are imaginary. And, but they are not even hallucinations, because they are in, inconsistent. Okay. If there are hallucinations, then I equals to 1. That's the result. Okay. 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 So the, I think I told you that the above, I again, one that it differs from G. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and the, uh, let's say, but, so perhaps I, I will stress the difference between G and G because it's, uh, everything is in the same factual situation we yeah. are considering counterfactuals within the given situation. But situation, the hardware is fixed. Okay? So we do not have features of measurements of things and there's no locality of that. Okay? And all that we assumed is that factual outcomes uh, and counter, counterfactual outcomes have to satisfy mutual relations which are consistent with quantum mechanical predictions. Okay? To put it short, in, in, in just one sentence, if he, if he checks checks friends result, checks, checks, not makes a torture on friend, checks, he gets friends result. Okay? So the moral of the story is that if Wigners do have full control of the degrees of freedom of, uh, uh, in friends lab, then friends cannot be taught of as reading out outcomes. They do do fast. That means that they can, if there is even a trace of environment, they can undo it. Okay. So, so effectively, the friends do just the measurement. Okay. They can undo the correlation of of the, of, of, the, of the environment with the with, with friends. Okay. So uh, uh, then, uh, 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 then, then friends cannot have hallucinations even because hallucinations, <laughs> they have hallucinations. They, this cannot be even transitory, okay? Because then uh, one equals two i, okay? And if the friends do not have the full control of all these degrees students in the friends lab, then there is no paradox, okay? Simply the, the friends 
uh, are, uh, let's say, are, are, are not super enough, okay? Uh, and and uh, and uh, uh, and also th there's the, the, this first step, okay? If, uh, um, sorry, I'm already tired and I cannot understand what. And this is it's very hot by Polish terms for 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 Indian terms. This is mid winter, most probably. Uh, uh, if friends do, do not have a full control of the degrees, the degrees of freedom in their lab, uh, ah, the paradox is void. Because that, that means that the friends are performing the normal experiment. Okay. So again, so as you see, in any way, there is no paradox. Okay. And what, has, what are kind of general, uh, general implication is that our no-go theorem for the existence of outcomes of pre-measurement is a strong argument for including the description of the coherence process mm, uh, uh, to, in, sorry, including in the description the decoherence process. And the reason is that me measurements which can be undone by some super cannot kind of have outcomes. And uh, the final thing is that I, let's say, we believe that uh, our reasoning also shows that there's some trouble with uh, the so-called relational quantum mechanics, okay? in which it, in which it, it is claimed that measurements outcomes can be, in principle, ob objective only relative to a given observer. And really, this covers the situation when you have an entanglement between system and the observer. And, uh, and, uh, we, so it turns out that if you, the thing is that in such considerations, people were not taking into account the JAT situation, the only, only the particle conditions. And so it, it was impossible to see. And the, the, the last implications are kind of verify reaching, and I wrote MZ, which is uh, not Max Zender interferometer, but Marek Zhukowski, and uh, this is unconsulted with Martin, but I believe that he did, did agree to do it. So just such. Four bullet points. So uh, one thing my postulate is the role of the coherence must be a part of any university lecture. And and uh, and the other thing is that advanced students must be warned that many researchers working in the foundations of quantum theory do not believe in quantum mechanics as it is. And uh, uh, and the other kind of advice to these researchers, if you formulate a paradoxical statement on, on a quantum prediction, first check whether it holds within quantum measurement. If it doesn't hold, be careful. Okay. And the final thing which for which I, from time to time, preach is that one must uh, work toward a precise quantum language. So. There are some elements which were introduced in 1930s and later, which are quite precise, but there is a lot of imprecision. And for example, I uh, put at different uh, poles, uh, this is the word observable, which is for me okay, because it shows that it, it's not a variable, it's not a viable according to that. It's something that you observe. But we also use and even I have this tendency, unfortunately, state of the system, and this is definitely a misnomer because it's, it's the, just a state of equivalent uh, prepared of, 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 of let's say, it's, it's, it's a description of, 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 of an equivalently prepared, of an ensemble of equivalently prepared systems. Uh, okay, and so with this statement, I, I I finish. I hope that I did, did not spoil your plans for longer discussion too much. Thank you very much, Professor Jukowski, for this nice and beautiful talk. Let's see if there are questions. I see there are many seniors, a couple of senior people are there. They may ask questions, they may ask directly. Question? Yeah, sure. 
Yes, yes, okay. So, uh, Professor Sukoski and the debunker from, from Calcutta, uh, greetings I to you nice. and very nice, nice to see you in at last speaking at a conference associated with Indian <laughs> and the institute near Calcutta. So we wanted to have you many times, you couldn't come. But anyway, so about your talk, of course, uh, it is quite stimulating. Now I have a couple of questions. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate a bit on the idea of your idea in that slide said about the measurement basis three, where you talk about the undo undoing this hallucination part, because that is the crucial part, no? Where yeah, you yeah, talk yeah, about crucial. Yes, yes, very yeah, crucial. Yeah. So that part, I am not sure I follow okay, entirely. Yeah. I've read your paper, thanks, but... Uh, ah, uh, uh, sorry. It, the, uh, here in this transparency, the description is better in the paper. Okay, I okay, noticed. Okay. Hey, yes, because noticed, in the paper it's, it's, it's a bit. To, to be, uh, to be honest, when, in the paper, right? when preparing the transparencies, I noticed wow that in the paper, let's say you can get a headache. It's correct, mm -hmm. but you can get a headache. I'm very sorry for that. Okay, but this okay. is uh, okay. very trivial. Okay, so okay. so perhaps okay. I will I will come back here. Okay, so just the three basic. Okay. Okay. And let's say the friends measure in basis C. Okay, this is yes, yes. They themselves, and so if there is L, then there is L. Okay, and okay. That's, that's the, and the notation which I uh, advocate for. Uh, for yes. Okay. Now, so I remind you that let's say there's some initial states of friends, and then they correlate themselves with, with the three. Okay, and now the effectively complementary. Now, okay. uh, Marcus, I have a. Uh, Remark, effectively complementary, this terminology, what you use the word effectively precisely to denote what? Uh, to distinguish between, from, from what because aspect? Wigner is not making in this story measurement on the system. But okay. According to Bruckner and Frauhinger and, uh, and Reiner, Wigner makes on the, his measurement on an effect uh, on on uh, on the entire lap of friends. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and so this is such basis of the measurement. Just look at the state. Here is here is a matrix. Okay, so it's a number. So it is on a subsystem on that entire system that they considered so, the measurement. So the measurement on the on 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 the entire lap plus the system of, of friends, yeah. which is a superposition of the yeah. measurement situations uh, observed by the friend. Okay? Yeah. And, and what is very important, this unitary matrix that yeah. links L3 yeah. uh, 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 with K2 is exactly yeah. the same like if there was no friend. It's the same unitary matrix like for Okay. It is just the two, two qubit transition matrix between unbiased basis two, two uh, sorry, between unbiased basis three to unbiased basis two. Okay? Okay. And that's so, why eight, just look, before the interaction looks like that, and after the interaction, it is exactly the same. The only thing is that there was this, this uh, coupling of, of, of the system and the form. And then when we in introduce this measurement, the result of this measurement must be identical, like if we were measuring here in basis two, mm -hmm. this original state. Because the algebra is the same. So in that sense, it is in sub some kind of subsystem of the whole measurement they consider. One can and view it in that way. The, the, your, what, what do you mean the subsystem? That means not, all, not the full basis. Okay. Okay, not yeah, yeah, no, it's not the full basis. No, but I wrote the basis of Wigner's contents. Contents. Okay, okay because really, uh, uh, let's say, and, but these are the only things that are important here. And all the uh, measurements uh, which uh, uh, turn effective are uh, uh, those which uh, uh, are, are related with those basis. And, and, okay, so all the projections, if you like, I tried not to use the word. But so all, this, all the projections are only in, in this 
situation are only for such banks. So okay. Other banks that are not interested. Yeah. Okay, so this is what. And and so when you say that uh, the the irreversibility as the, the necessity of assuming the essential irreversibility. So where does it come in precisely in this whole argument? Uh, because it is automatically built in, no? because by the entanglement states we have produced and we have put in the words as re this requirement. But if one goes by by the equations and so on, and one looks at Bruckner's and others argument, his point about irreversibility, which, which step precisely it is crucial in your argument? Uh, this, this, let's say, this is a, a, a crucial to show that if friends make real measurements, huh. okay, real, which are, uh, which are in con con concurrent with quantum measurement theory, then there is no parameter. Okay. Then friends do, please, excuse me. Uh, 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 to put it short, if they make measurements, uh, which are proper measurements with, yeah. with environment coherence and so on and so on, then this uh, measurement by a super Wigner is only random results in this one computer. Okay? This only random results. So, th and, and there is no. Uh, the, the, the paradox cannot be uh, formulated. Uh, uh, Bruckner's inequality cannot be violated, and so on. Oh, the violation of the inequality. It's impossible. In such a case. So, so the only thing that can the violation of Bruckner's inequality or Frau, and or the Frau Herger, Frau Hinger, uh, uh, argument can only be based on uh, no environment in the, uh, or no, no decoherence in French lab. Okay, so that's the crucial point. Yeah, yes. Okay, and finally the question, the remark you made about in the last slide about the possible implication regarding the relational state interpretation. Can you say a few words on it? Uh, yeah. Look, uh, the, is that uh, it's ob there's an obvious tension despite the fact that there is a paper, okay. uh, there is a paper, um, there is a paper by uh, uh, by Rovelli which tries to link his ideas with the business friends okay. uh, experiments. But the thing is that uh, in, in that, that, that's an archive last year, year ago, or something, or, and and he he. he he, in a way, he classifies two types of, 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 uh, of facts. Okay, one fact is the fact that we kind of, let's say, have in our quantum calculations, okay? Mm -hmm. So the fact is are the final results, finding of the detectors, okay? But also, uh, he introduces relative facts, okay, which are objective only with respect to certain uh, certain observer, and in my excuse me, your objective with respect to can you repeat to a certain observer? Okay. okay. So it's relative to observer. Uh, yes, yes. Relative mm -hmm. to observer, and if you really uh, look at it, this is just uh, uh, the, the the those relative facts in his approach appear when the system is gets entangled with the observer, so on the pre-measurement stage. So what he calls uh, relative facts are really, it's for me, the state of entanglement of the system with, the, with the, let's say, the, with, with friends. Okay? Mm -hmm. But what I show here is that if we go one step further to the GX situation, let's say to, to think that there is something Ob objective, which is perhaps felt only by this observer, and even temporarily, then I equals to one. It means that it leads to algebraic continuity. So you, you, you cannot do it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's 
सर एनी क्वेश्चन